are you all doing? This is Vertic Designs here. And for this video, I am going to show you how to remove a background in Photoshop with the quick select tool. The very first thing you want to do is you want to import your image. There's two ways of doing this. The first way is to go to file and open, or you can do it the way I do it. And that is that I find the location of the image and I just drag it into Photoshop. This will automatically load it up. If yours doesn't load up, then there might be a problem with your image. It might be corrupt or it's not a supported file. Next thing you want to make sure is that once you've imported your image, your image does not have a little lock next to it in the layers area where you have all the layers. Sometimes you will get a background which will be locked and this will stop you from doing anything else with the image. So just make sure that you unlock it to actually be able to remove the background. To actually get to the quick select tool, you can either go to the fourth tool down or you can press W on your keyboard and this will bring it up for you. Another thing that you should know about the quick select tool is that you can use square bracket first one and the end one to close it to actually increase or decrease. The first square bracket to start it off will take it away or make it smaller. It will go in fives and the end bracket will make it larger. And for me, all I need to do is go around it like so. As you can see right now, it's actually doing a great job because the background is blurred and the image is actually more focused on. It also makes it a lot easier if you have bold colors, for example, black and white, they stand out a lot more. So it makes it a lot easier for you, but just keep going around it. And as you can tell, just like I always mention, it is not exactly the most accurate tool. And that is why I don't always use it. As you can see, the gun is not going to be in our image. It's actually being cut out. It's not selected that area. What we want to do is this is when we go to the subtract tool and we pretty much also highlight the gun. We can hold alt on our keyboard and use a scroll wheel to go up. This just lets us zoom in, making it easier for us to see the image. And here we want to also use the shortcut key to make it smaller by doing the first bracket and selecting the areas that have not been selected. So making it a little bit smaller and that little bit of the gun right there, going to go to the add one, want to get rid of that. And pretty much we just want the background. We don't want the gun. We are selecting the background to actually delete it. Using the subtract just pretty much says, I don't want this part and we don't want that. We don't want to select the gun because that's the bit that we want. So go back to the add again, keep going around it. So now we pretty much have an option between deleting the background now and deleting this bit later, or you can select this bit as well. And you can delete that with the background. So if we zoom in and we use the shortcut key to make it smaller, keep on selecting this area here, do a little bit of a rough sort of selection and then correct it right now. For me, I don't really need to make this image too perfect because I am only showing you an example, but the more time you spend on it, the better it'll look. And it depends on if you're looking for a professional result, but I think that'll be okay for me. We can now hold alt again and go down with the scroll wheel to zoom out. We are pretty much ready now. This is the easy part. All you got to do is press delete on your keyboard and this will delete the background. Another thing I like to do when I delete a background is I like to go to the second tool here and pretty much drag the selection out of the image or the area we can see. All right, so now that the background is gone, we also want to focus on the bits that we didn't do. So this is a bit right here with the glasses. For this bit here with the glasses, I think I'm actually going to use the pen tool just because the edges are really thin and the quick selection tool might not do a great job. So just quickly pick the pen tool here, go around it. And let me just, if you want to curve line, you just hold in the left click and connect it all back to the first one, go to selection, press okay. And you just press delete here to fix the glasses. We can't just leave it like that, otherwise it will look odd. So to make it look like he's actually got glasses. We are going to use the bucket tool. We're going to create a new layer on top of this one. And on that layer, we are going to pick a black color, press okay, and just fill in there. And you want to go to the second tool again, 
click anywhere, which will deselect it. You want to press Control J a few times just to make the edges a little bit harder. Once you've done that, you want to connect all of these up. So you hold Shift and click the first layer. That will select them all. Right click and go to Convert to Smart Object. This will just compress them all down to one. Normally what I like to do is I also like to turn them back to a layer. I would select a eraser tool and just click anywhere. This message will pop up, press OK, and now it's back to a layer. Now that you've done all that, all you do now is just turn down the opacity to a much lower level. Let's go with something like, I think maybe 60 will be all right. If we zoom out, and yeah, that does look similar to the image. Maybe we might increase it to 70. What we're going to do now is we're going to put these two together. So we are going to hold shift and click on the top one. Then we convert it to a smart object. When you do this, you can't actually edit this layer here anymore. So make sure that you are happy with your result. And once again, use the eraser tool and click on the screen and then press OK. And that is pretty much it. We are done with the image. I know the edges are a little bit rough right now. I will do a video in the future showing you how to fix the edges. There's so many different ways of doing it. I need to actually find a way that I prefer and then I'll show you how to do it. Because right now what I would do is that I would just do control J and keep on duplicating the layer until it makes it more of them. That makes the edges a little bit harder, but as you can tell, from our image, it kind of messed up a little bit. If you're looking for a quick result like this, then this is great for you because you can quickly do it. And sometimes when you're editing the images, they'll blend in anyway and look good, even if the edges are a little bit soft. You can tell from my image, there was a little bit of a mistake right here where it selected this bit here. We can always fix that and or do it again, but I'm not too bothered about it. I am quite happy with it right now. What I can do if I don't want it to affect the eye is, I can probably fix a little bit of it right now just by highlighting this like that and then doing Control J. And you can tell it is getting a little bit harder the edges and it does look slightly better. And if we go all of these, put them all into one and press this again, there we go. So I hope this video was helpful. I know it is a little bit short and I will in the future make more videos which are for more advanced sort of stuff and I'm going to go into a lot more detail with these type of tools. But I know most of you are here just for the quick results. So if you are, then that's great. This is what the video was about. If you have a problem like this where you have a little bit of the edges, you can right click, go to blending options, go to stroke, and then make this to inside, make it to one, change the color to black, and then change this to screen, which is right there. Right now it won't do it because there isn't a background. But if you drag in a background, what it will do is that it will make the black sort of disappear and it will cut the edges by one pixel. Let me know what you thought of the video and what videos you would like to see in the future. Let's see if we can reach 50 likes on this video and I will see you all next time. Bye.